Welcome to Engineer Training. Here you'll be taken through the operation of a classic electromotive division F7 diesel electric locomotive. During this brief introduction, we will go through the critical locomotive controls and freight operations. When you're ready, climb aboard to get started. Take a seat in the engineer's position. This is where you'll be spending most of your time. The fuel pump will need to be closed to allow fuel to reach the locomotive. The engine is currently shut down and will need to be started before progressing. Press and hold the engine start button to activate it. The isolation valve is currently in the start position. Use the indicated control to set the isolation valve to the run position. The rotor valve allows the operator to set the brake mode to match the required operation of the locomotive. For the lead locomotive of a long train, use the freight setting. For the lead locomotive of a shorter train, use the passenger setting. If the locomotive is a trailing locomotive, use the appropriate freight or passenger lap setting. If running as a light locomotive, the passenger setting is recommended for rapid brake response. The reverser determines the direction of travel. The transition lever is used to control the flow of the electrical current to the traction motors which is set based on the movement the locomotive is currently performing. As we are performing switching duties around a yard, we will need to set the control to series parallel shunt. Do this now by using the indicated lever. The unit selector is used by the engineer to specify how many locomotives are in the current lash-up. Use the indicated lever to set the number of locomotives in this formation. The generator field switch will need to be set. Use the indicated switch to activate the generator field now. For this introduction, we will be performing switching duties and handling the loading of hoppers. You are now ready for service. Using the throttle, apply a small amount of power to get moving. Keeping to speed limits is important. If you begin over speeding, apply a small amount of brake by moving the handle into the braking range.
This yard features both manual and automatic switches. The manual switches will need to be set on foot before departing. Climb down now and make sure the switches are set to the correct position. The hoppers are in front of us. You will need to approach them slowly to safely couple and avoid a potential derailment. With the hoppers successfully coupled, your next task is to bring the cut of cars over to the tipple to begin the loading process. When loading hoppers, you need to keep to a slow and controlled speed to allow the loader to correctly and safely load the hoppers. Apply a small amount of power to start moving and then adjust the throttle back to the idle position once you're traveling at no more than three miles per hour. Nice job, the hoppers are now loaded your final task is to couple this cut of cars to the waiting train. You will need to contact the dispatcher before you can leave the yard. Contact the dispatcher and ensure you're given clearance before proceeding.
With the hoppers now coupled, you can uncouple the locomotive from the train. Use the cut bar on the rear hopper to uncouple the hoppers from this locomotive. Good job. That is all of the tasks that have been assigned to you for now. Bring the locomotive back to the yard for use later in the day. Good work. That concludes all of the basics of operating this locomotive.